Stadium on, of course, a very special day. Of course, we've already had one match in this round of the Women's Six Nations, and what a match it was in Grenoble. France coming from behind to defeat England. A huge, huge game in front of a huge audience. Wales, Italy, similarly, will be playing in front of big numbers through this morning into this afternoon. Also, at the same time, of course, in Dublin. Ireland hosting the Scottish ladies. It means that at the moment the table looks like this, with France pushing for a Grand Slam when they go to Colwyn Bay next Friday. Wales pushing to get into that third spot up against the Irish. They know they're going to have to get a maximum haul from this game this afternoon. Well, Italy still seeking, still searching for a win, for a point in this campaign to galvanise their confidence for the hosts. Well, they have the satisfaction of that success over Scotland in round one, but back-to-back -back defeats subsequently to England and Ireland means this match-up with the Italians gives an enhanced sense of opportunity knocks in front of their home fans, really. I'm delighted to be joined by former Wales winger Philippa Tatiat. Philippa. The expectation is there, the excitement is there. The big question is whether both teams can cope with it, I guess, today. Yes, I mean, this is an incredibly, incredibly exciting fixture. Uh, Wales were very fortunate to play here uh, quite some time ago now, 2012, and three of those girls who played then are still playing today. But for the rest of the squad, this is the very first time they would have played in this stadium. So incredibly exciting times. Well, it is going to be uh, very much a drip feed through the course of this game, I suspect, with in terms of audience participation. I'm sure at this time of the morning it's coffee, not alcohol. But we shall wait and see how this builds up, certainly for the women involved. They know they have got to be ready from the off. Sarah Baratine and Karis Phillips leading out their teams. A big, big day, Mother's Day. We see Jade Knight bringing out, I think that's a three-year-old Emirates who's uh, going to get his taste of what this huge stadium is about. Good to see smiles on faces as these girls really try and savour and enjoy the experience. First up, of course, we've got the formalities for Wales. My hen, Vlad Van Haddai, land of my fathers, which will follow well, the, the Italian anthem, the Italiani. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand for the anthem, signore, signore.
Hugely passionate, emotional and memorable moments for the teams. Let's take at the lineups following on from that Dublin defeat. Roland Phillips makes four changes all in the backs. Sevens girls Hannah Jones and Jazz Joyce join up with Jessica Kavanagh Williams in a very exciting looking back three. Robin Wilkins comes in for the injured Rebecca De Filippo in midfield, whilst Kira Bevan gets her first taste of this Six Nations in the number nine shirt. The pack numbers one to eight remain intact. Well, the Italians certainly took a pounding from those surging French and Corsica a fortnight ago, both physically and mentally. So the lead into this game has been timely. In contrast to their host, the Italian backline stays constant, as it has pretty much through all the games in this campaign. Lucia Guy and Valentina Ruzza have recovered from injuries sustained in the Irish match. Whilst the back row continues to be rejigged, Franco moving to blindside to allow for the return of Giordano at number eight. The backs were plenty more experienced for those wearing red than those wearing blue. But 16 ladies there looking to make a difference as and when they are called upon by their coaches. There's our referee today, Marie Lamatt from France with a break spear and Spurrier messes from the Welsh Rugby Union. Her assistants came begs in the truck as the television match official. So the lid is on the Principality Stadium. How soon will these teams be able to bring the pot to the boil? The first five or ten minutes always with the adrenaline coursing through the veins. They just have to try and settle themselves into this game. Rigoni, a key character for the Azuri. Bring in. Clearance working but going straight out from uh, Madia. Yeah, unfortunately we have seen that in uh, a few of the games this Six Nations. The Italians kicking can be a little inconsistent and I'm sure that's Sorry. not what she wanted from that kick. Well, in the land of Mimams, as it's been rightly retitled today, it is a big day for all concerned, all families, all the players. And now they've got to get their playing heads on and make sure that they put into practice what they've been practicing on the training paddocks through the course of the last two weeks. <laughs> Phillips taking responsibility at the back of that driving mall. Now it's moved out, Snowsill. Out to Hannah Jones, but the pass not accurate enough. Difficult for Kavanaugh Williams to pick that one up. Yeah, that's a real shame there. We had a nice solid platform set by the forwards. You know, that's what we're looking to do and then release those backs out wide because we've got some real threatening players there, especially in Jess Kevin and Williams. So that's a shame we couldn't quite get that pass to hand, but hopefully that's just shaking off the uh, the early nerves of the game. For both these teams, Philip, are playing on this sort of stage, which is new to the majority. I know you were part of the team that played here the only other time that the Welsh women have stepped out here. But it is a case of really having to focus, I guess, and trying to settle and ignore the surroundings. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, nerves can be a good thing as long as they are channeled in the right way. You don't want to ever want them to take over you. You want to use them, you want to embrace them. So only time will tell how these girls are coping with that. For the Welsh girls, well, they had Sam Warburton in camp to present the shirts before this game. They know the, the profile, the relevance of it. Kavanaugh Williams trying to get Wales back up into opposition territory. Snow Sill, Wilkins, the new hinge really of this Welsh backline. Rebecca de Filippo failing a fitness test during the week, having been uh, carried off out in Dublin uh, two weeks ago. It's great to see Jasmine Joyce there with her hands on the ball. I've got to be honest, she's not in this for uh, contact leg drive uh, sort of games, but hey, she's showing she can do that as well. What we want is the ball in space in her hands. The Italians trying to set up the driving mall, but that reception committee in there of Thomas Phillips and Evans, the front row triumvirate there doing the job for the Welsh. 
I'm going to say the first scrum, and it'll be fascinating to see how that works. There's Jazz Joyce back into the 15s, having been working with the sevens, preparing for the Commonwealth Games. Yeah, absolutely. She's been um, really at the heart of the sevens program, but um, she's showing her versatility here of uh, making that step up into the 15s as well. Kira Bevan returning from that ankle injury she sustained in the autumn. Interesting to see whether she can ignite this backline. So much pace, and there is Kevin Williams just stepping out. I think the flag up on the far side. Okay. But and again, big indications of how wide the Welsh want to go early on and utilise the pace that they've got in that back three. Yeah, absolutely, and that was uh, much slicker hands by the Welsh back line as well. Please, wait the straw to, to move, OK? Just the wait lines are the running, not helping the left winger in the end and just running out of space, ultimately. Yeah, I think they need to uh, message on now would be for the Welsh girls. Just straighten up just a little bit. Let's maximise the space that we can create. Italian line out not working to satisfaction wait. and offering the hosts another chance to set up okay. an attack. Okay. Leonard Harris, the number eight, such a dynamic number eight, key to the way that Wales operate. Kick through from Wilkins, ricochets back into Italian clutches, and here they come. Maria Magatti, forceful presence on the wing for the Azzurri, given the opportunity. Weren't many opportunities out in Corsica, has to be said. Locatelli. Setting the focus for her forwards, but held up at the moment. Does well to get the ball back for Baratine, winning her 81st cap this afternoon. Okay. One shy of uh, Veronica Skuvon's total. She's in second place, and uh, Michaela Tondinelli with 87 at the top of that particular tree. Yeah, Baratine is, is such a fantastic player. She really is uh, at the heart of this Italian team. She's um, playing there at scrum half, captain of the team. She's all over the place. You will see her in and out of everything. We talk about scrum halves being the heartbeat, but she really is the heartbeat, the metronome. She's just got, just got to try and make sure she doesn't become the principal soloist as well, because there's so many things that she has to do. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously, the goal for the Italians is to bring all of their players up to the mark, but she certainly does lead by example. Crouch! Bye! Stop, ladies. Thank you. Okay, no pre engage, please. Okay. Madame Lamat setting okay, out five. the parameters okay. by Far, right? which she wants Great. the two Ready? packs okay, to okay. engage. That was good. That was good. That was good. That was good. Working it away from the forward dominance that we've seen both in men's and women's games. And that's what uh, Andrea Di Gian Domenico is trying to set up. Rigoni set up there by the back rowers. First real attacking opportunity. Little inside pop from Medea doesn't go to hand, but it's still there for the ladies in blue. But uh, score of that try against England in round one. The little stab through from Sillery. Kavanaugh Williams doing very well to skid back in defence, but Wales under pressure inside their own 22 for the first time in this game. Harris, a wise old head now, winning her 52nd cap, knowing just what to do in this sort of scenario. No, no, back, back, back. And Bevan given plenty of room in which to operate the box kick, but it's going to come back. Ferland, another of these... Very good players in the Italian ranks. Says Franco, wearing the six shirt. Rigoni had to just concentrate on the ball, which allowed Joyce to come in and make the hit. Maratine and Ferlan just concocting the next move. Giacomoli sets it back once again for the scrum half. Madia trying to get the forwards involved. That's Petoni. Two halfbacks trying to keep things moving. Sillery has the ball out, and there's the first try, and it's gone to Italy. Isabella Locatelli 
What a good score, so well constructed from the visitors. And the scoreboard is underway inside 10 minutes, but it's down to Italy. Yeah, that was a great build-up of phase play from the Italians there. I dare say there was one or two times where they could have capitalised a little earlier if the, if the ball had gone to hand, but they stay composed, they kept the pressure on and they've reaped the rewards from it. Not quite sure whether their first kick was intended to go out to, to touch or not, but still it played in the, into their hands. I think Wales would be very disappointed about letting them have that overlap seemingly so easily. I talked at the top about how Italy have shown flares, spurts, if you will, of, of this sort of talent, but have not been able to stitch it together. There we see a case in point of where they've been able to make sure their skills under pressure have been up to the task, and what a good try produced in the end. Yeah, absolutely. They have had these little flirts with, through the Six Nations of some really, really good moments of creative rugby. But what the other teams in the Six Nations have done, which fails, Wales, unfortunately, have failed to do, is they've starved Italy of the ball. If you do give Italy the time, they will string things together. So not the ideal start for Wales. Michaela Sillery, formerly of Harlequin, hence the scrum cap. Absolutely on the spot from the tee, and what a start it is for the visitors. Yes, some fantastic linking play there, and it's so good to see, you know, modern-day rugby now, you've got your forwards, they are going to be putting themselves out wide, showing that they can be as elusive a runner as a back can. Well, there's a slap in the face for the hosts. Advantage. Plenty of time, of course, Not no... Worries about making sure they use the next 70 minutes to get themselves in front. Of course, the last time the Italians were in town, and not in Cardiff, it has to be said, Port Albert was the place in two years ago when they actually came and won on Welsh soil. Indeed, the history books show that uh, Italy have been dominant, I think, in three of the last four. Yeah, three of the last four games that uh, Wales have met Italy. Italy have actually come away with the win, but the most important result, I would say, would be last year, you know, the most recent one, and that's when Wales did win. Yeah, out in Ancona, 20 points to eight. Success for the ladies in red. Kavanaugh Williams sets the ball back. Snowsill throwing it into that forward phalanx in there. So many of numbers one to eight. Determined to keep their hands on the ball, not least the captain, Karis Phillips, doing the hard yards. So a turnover there from Duca. Well, Italy getting the call as Phillips holds on for too long. Yeah, that was very good work rate by the Italians there. They didn't even commit that many players to the ruck then, and they still came away with the turnover. So often, Karis Phillips, the target on that breakdown for the... But she needed the support. They only had her scrum off there and, as a consequence, got isolated. Yeah, unfortunately, she just got caught on her own then. And at this level, you just cannot afford to be doing that. She should have been working in a pack, so someone's obviously uh, not quite followed her in quick enough. 12 minutes gone. Baratine, Medea, again, looking for those runs. There's... Jada Franco made such an impact off the bench out in Ireland, got the starting berth in Corsica against France, but really had no ball to play with. Now, already showing what she's about, what a difference she can make. Petoni struggling to keep the ball in play, doing well to do so. Rigoni steps in as playmaker, feeds out to Rutza. Recovered from that elbow injury sustained against the Irish. It's Franco again. It is. Has a dynamic to her play that allows Italy to get up over the gain line. Rigoni throws out wide to Magatti. Playing on the right wing, though, she's wearing number 11. That's a great turnover from the captain. Wales pouring through to make the most of this. Great work from Karis Phillips, as ever, leading from the front.
Yeah, absolutely. That was a very timely and needed turnover. Yeah. I just, it's a shame we couldn't quite get that ball back then because the, the field literally opened up. If they could have got the ball through hands out into the winger, Jasmine Joy, she would have had a lot of fun with 20 or 30 metres to play with. Karis Phillips, who comes from such great rugby stock. Dad, of course, a dual code international. There she is. Works so hard. Granddad was a Welsh international as well. Brian Thomas, a Welsh second rower back in the 60s. Line up not working for Wales and they're backpedaling. Double quick. Joyce. Taken That's down okay. by her opposite number. Oh, clever little work there by Jasmine Joy. She got tackled to the floor, okay. released the ball, got back to her feet and just gained an extra couple of metres for us. Yeah, good awareness from the uh, right winger. The uh, ball going loose, though. Baratine weighing up the options. Rigoni feeding out to Magatti, the little chip and charge. Great covering, an important covering from Hannah Jones. There's one thing the, the Italians are good at, is scramble play. They will live off scraps that any team give them. That was great reactions by the Italian to try and capitalise on that. Really putting Wales under pressure here. Be careful. Linz, back. So, Wales just... Catching their breath, really. They've had plenty of the ball, but unforced errors have given the Italians the chance to show what they're about in attack. Medea and Rigoni. Celery there as well. Second rows combining. Rutsa and Duca. Second rows really has been an issue. Valeria Fedrighi hurt her wrist against England. The Saracen second row subsequently had an operation. Flavia Severin, we haven't seen at all in this Six Nations, the ex-boxer who showed so well out in Ireland in the World Cup. But they'll be thankful that uh, Valentina Ruzza has recovered from that elbow problem. Good choke tackle from the Welsh forwards there, working overtime to make sure that Ruzza couldn't drop to the floor. Yeah, Mel Clay there, quite pivotal in that period of play. She's uh, such a workhorse for Wales. Uh, she's been prominent in every single game of the Six Nations, so keep an eye out for her. Number five, Mel Clay. Ronan Phillips just surveying what's going on. Knows that this is very much a bigger picture exercise, having qualified for the next World Cup, having come seventh in Ireland. This allows him to blood more new players. I think there's been seven new caps so far and indeed there's an eighth waiting on the bench and Alex Donovan if she gets on this morning are we into this afternoon yet we probably are just two minutes in yeah Alex Donovan a very exciting center had a fantastic regional campaign actually won a uh, player of the game in uh, one of the warm-up games for Wales against the army as well kick from Snowsill brought in by Furlan Furlan with a lovely change of balance you can see the different ambition now within this Italian side. The belief is there and it's beginning to be galvanised by these first 15, 16 minutes of this match. Yeah, you can see Italy are developing now. They've got a forwards game and they've got a backs game. If they can bring those two together to work well, then they could be a real threat. Called from uh, Baratine, calling for the scrum. Big boot of Alan yeah, Snowsill okay. almost yeah. working, but no, see okay. the no. handling no, ability okay. of the Italian fullback yeah. and that beautiful balanced running. Well, oh, Rigoni is going to invite the forwards to get possession from the lineup. Beatrice Rigoni has really been schooled as a replacement for right. Skiavon. Yeah. There's Numbers. Andrea Di Gian Domenico, who was actually bringing through. Rigoni at 22 now to be the replacement fly half, but now Skiavon is retired. She's back in Japan, from what I understand. Rigoni is staying in that 12 spot, and it's either Veronica Medea or Jessica Posato who's on the bench, being used in that playmaker role. Too quick. 
You're outside, OK? Outside okay. of that 15-metre line. Technical infringement, sloppy Getting penalty out. given away by the Italians. Yeah, that's a shame for Italy. I mean, they worked hard for that possession, and that was a great point to uh, build a platform off. But relief for the Welsh girls, and Eleanor Snowsill will tump that right down the end of the field, real good distance on that, try and get Wales out of their half. The experience of somebody like Snowsill, okay, so yes, important, made her debut yeah. against Sweden back, what, nine years ago now? Yeah, Eleanor Snowsill, fantastic player, in and out of the sevens and the fifteens, and is a, a vital playmaker in both. Fantastic athlete and rugby player. As is Sean and Harris stepping in as first receiver there. Presentation that isn't clinical enough, and again the turnover ball is there for the visitors. Try score a Locatelli. Athletic number seven, as you can see. Plenty of pace. Your hands red. Good. Well, Duca's hands letting no her down. Now, Wales looking to make something of unexpected possession. Alicia Butchers, another 7's 15 okay, star. Yeah, very, very exciting younger player. Again, being very involved in this Six Nations campaign and also then with the 7's. Such a versatile, aggressive, powerful, agile and fit as a fiddle. Oh, you can say that again. She's a, Her and Melissa Clay are the only two forwards that haven't missed a single minute so far in this Six Nations. Okay. Yeah, their conditioning is, uh, is absolutely top quality to be able to come through full-bodied, healthy and fit all the way through a campaign and in and out of sevens. It's a, it's a real okay, credit to their conditioning. Yeah. Okay. Kira Bevan back oh, on the park, I'm winning her 20th cap at the age of just 20. Plenty of experience in a very young body there. And Crouch. no doubt, Ronald Phillips happy to have Bye. his premier scrum off back on the park. Yeah, Kira Bevan, only 20, and came into the game at, at rather a late age as well, but um, definitely found her call in, real natural rugby player. Snowsill and Wilkins again trying to find that width, trying to utilise that wide channel. Kavanagh Williams not finding any way through and just working it a touch. Wales, just their lines of running, not helping the wingers again. Yeah, the Welsh back line there, much more of a crisp uh, pass and catch, ball out in front, which was great, but we just need to make sure that uh, Wales are running straight and hard to really fix the defenders to try and make the most out of the space on the park here. Into the second quarter of this game and that solitary score from Locatelli. Again, the line out not working properly, but this time it's Rigoni who picks up the scraps. Ready? Okay. Trying to look for that inside passage for Giordana Duca, but the alignment, the synchronization just not right. They're going to get the penalty call anyway. Call against Carol Thomas. Yeah, you see that quite often with the Italians. As individuals, they've got a lot of flair, a lot of creativity, and they're, and they're looking for those little inside passes, but sometimes they're not all on the same page, so to speak, to read that. The kick not finding the target that they were looking for. So, Wales again looking on that left corridor. Bevan sets the target hey, hey. for Amy Evans. To the captain. Play. The offload is there. That's a good offload for Linnekrat. Up to halfway go Wales. Playing the scrum half. Allowed on this occasion. Butchers moves it on. The line is good from Karen Lake. Lake looking for support, finds it from her scrum half. Bevan sets the target, sets the focus. Wales split right and left. Bit of momentum into this Welsh attack. Started by Alicia Butchers, carried on by the number six. Jones gets through one. Carol Thomas. Scored the first try in Ancona last year in round one that led to that Wales success, the solitary success, as it turned out. Snowsill 
surveying what's in front of her, being surrounded by blue shirts. Jones takes Wales once again into the red zone, but again, okay. the presentation isn't accurate enough. Again, there's turnover, and again, Rigoni's boot clears the lines, but doesn't find touch. Jazz Joyce winds it up. No hands, boo! No. Wales get the penalty call. Number 12. Well, they got the phases together there without really making the headway they wanted, but this, they, you feel they've got to get some points out of this sort of position. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Wales have spent far too much time in their own half. Now they're down here, great positioning in the 22. They need to come away with something. That was a great uh, build-up of phase play. All started there with Alicia Butchers. What a great offload. If you can bust through that tackle as a forward, get your hands free and release someone, you get behind the defence, and that's what allowed it to catch Italy off guard here. Karen Lake making a He's great back. break there. Yeah, the athleticism of Lake, Jones and Jazz Joyce utilised through those phases of attack. Now it's down to the muscle of the forwards. Oh, sloppy play. That's very frustrating for Wales. Being caught crossing there, so when a player from their own team has got in front of the ball carrier, fortunately preventing Italy. The, the shake of the head the from Roland Phillips just uh, making his feelings obvious, but again, possession doesn't provide points. Let's take a look at this. Seanad Harris, who is being called out. There, I think it was Carol Thomas, wasn't it? It's this one! it's this one! Well, not quite clear then who was in front, but uh, Seanad Harris showing her... Uh, Rightful uh, frustration. Italy just about rescue the line out with Valentina Ruzza setting the ball back for Baratine. On the charge comes Giada Franco. Just 21 years of age. That was great fighting no by her then. Nearly got held up by the Welsh. Uh, back to, to wait, wait, fall through it. Rigoni well, stepped out and again. A sloppy mistake this time from Italy. Hands the opposition the ball and the impetus again. And Rigoni really should have been far more aware of her surroundings in that position. Yeah, Rigoni's going to be very frustrated with that kick. It had a great load of distance on it, but you've got to be accurate with them at this level of the game. And that's given Wales now an attacking position back in the Italian 22. So what can the hosts make of this opportunity? Harry's to Bevan. Okay. Robin Wilkins sets out the stall. There's Butchers again. Wales crowding that 15 metre channel. Nobody's spread to the right at all. Snowsill. Gets the call from Butchers. Again, the forwards coming off Snowsill's shoulder. This time, Harris. That's the 22-meter line. They get the call from the referee this time. Swinging it out to that left channel. Hannah Jones trying to sidle her way through there. Going back for that earlier call. Harris Phillips well aware that this opportunity That's needs I mean. maximising. Yeah, quick, and please. Wales actually did very well at shortening the line. The left side that they went down then, you only had four Italians in front of them, actually defending quite narrow. If we could have had maybe a skip pass around the back, the backs, uh, Welsh backs trying to get the ball behind and round them. Unfortunately, they went through the hands, but not at that straight line that uh, they, they need to be running at. Ran yeah. a slight drift and just okay. ran out of space okay. on the field. Well, Robin Wilkins is going to take first dibs off the tee. Wilkins, who started at fly half in those first two games against Scotland and England. Made her debut against Italy four years ago. Been pretty much an ever present since.
Wilkins breaks the Welsh bagel just before the half hour mark. Wales on the board thanks to the boot of the Osprey Centre. Yeah, Wales will be very pleased to go in now at half time with some points on the board. It needs to be said though that really was given to Wales by the Italians. The Italians let them in to have those points. A very interesting 12 minutes leading up to the break now. See who is going to affect the match barometer most before they hit the hatches. Wales need to capitalise on those points, take that momentum into their attack. Sean Lillicrat setting the ball back. I think that's Mel Clay at the releasing that and the back line now again getting that ball along it but the running line just heading towards that far touch Karen Lake taking the contact Snow Sill feeding out to the forwards as ever led by Alicia Butchers now they go back to that left hand side with Harris won her 50th cap in the match at the stoop such an experienced operator, the PE teacher. Move, then. So important. Scored a couple of tries in that game against Italy in Patolba two years ago. Loose pass. Just, I think, edging forward from an Italian hand. Yeah, a bit of scramble played by Wales there. They couldn't quite link any phases together. Got a little bit frantic. And unfortunately, there were some handling errors in that. Once again, we can see the back line putting okay. the ball through the hands. Time off. Unfortunately, not quite yeah. running straight and direct. So it left Karen Lake with no option to try and bust through there. Is that where the Welsh back line misses the yeah. likes of Rebecca okay. de Filippo? Is a more okay direct centre, perhaps Wilkins, more, yeah. more okay. of a 13, so, perhaps, on a 12? Would that be fair? No yeah, Re Rebecca de Filippo certainly does offer you that straight fixing line. And one way they, Wales have used her before is offering her as that short line and then going behind the back of her and that allows then Wales to still get the ball through the hands but it stops the defence drifting because okay. they focus in on her. So they're missing that today. Okay. Blood. okay. Half an hour gone in this game and just four points of difference between the two. Well, okay. blood replacement for Michaela Sillery. Right. Brings uh, I think that's out of Let's go. Aramazzo, the Viorba back on as what may be a temporary replacement for the outside centre. Crouch! She's behind there, honest. Just having that uh, blood check to make sure that that can be stemmed as Shannon Harris. What a drive and pick up from the base from the big number eight. Lake balances, juggles, takes Wales into the 22. Huge opportunity here for the home side. The home fans know the surge from Butchers. Quick ball demanded, provided. Phillips. Wilkins, Hannah Jones just trying to find a way through. Good tackling so far from the Italians. Amy Evans puts her head down, plenty of power from the former Welsh weightlifting international. Takes her team up to within. Use it. Couple of feet now of that white line. Back, back, back. No, the body's there. Well, struggling for the line, I think they've got that. They're celebrating, it's Alicia Butchers who's getting the congratulations. And that is a very, very big score in this game now. 
Yeah, and what a pivotal point for Wales to uh, score that try. That was well needed for them to take that now into the half-time and hopefully come out second half firing. All started from this fantastic break from Seanan Harries. That is her at her best. She is deceivingly fast and powerful, having the awareness then to put in the pass. Great juggling act by Karen Lake as well. Thank you. Number six for Wales. Oh, I don't think it is, actually. Hang on. Or is it? Yes, it is. I thought that was a try. Yeah. That was it. Butchers being on hand to make sure that there was no doubt to the grounding. And the blindside flanker getting Wales' first try of this match. And well deserved as well. She's been a standout performer so far, so it's great to see her being on the receiving end of that try. Wilkins trying to swing it in from the left-hand side, not managing that one. Well, Butchers, who made a debut against Ireland two years ago and then a week later scored a try in her next match against Scotland. She's sown her value, both to the 15s and the 7s teams. And that back row for Wales really now beginning to impress upon the game. Impact and influence. Yeah, absolutely. And you've also got the youngster Beth Lewis there on the blind side, and um, she is definitely one to watch for the future. The under-18 sevens captain has now made the jump up to the senior squad, and uh, she's one to be developed. Yeah, Beth Lewis playing a rugby out of Gloucester Hartbury and working with Susie Appleby and Liza Burgess, former Welsh international, the lady who started Maggie Alphonse's rugby career back in the day at Saracens. Yeah, the legend of the day. I had the privilege of playing alongside her as well. So a good tutor for Beth Lewis to work with over the next few years, no question about that. Welsh hearts and heads now with renewed confidence, renewed enthusiasm following that score. And their noses in the lead, big psychological statement just before the break, if they can hold on to it. Lovely balanced running from Jazz Joyce. Oh, she had Wilkins inside, but opted to go on the outside flank. Italy struggling to get themselves back in position. That is a real testament of confidence by the Welsh squad to actually go through the hands in their 22 rather than kicking it out. They've certainly got their tails up. Big moments, albeit still in the first half. Just over five minutes left till the break. Well, Kavanaugh Williams again running out of room on that left flank, but Wales now with the ambition, the positivity in their attacking play. They've just got to manipulate the defence a bit more to open the doors for the likes of Jazz Joyce. Yeah, absolutely. I think that'll be the key messages for the Welsh squad at uh, the half-time. That was great running uh, by Jazz Joyce, but uh, she could have just linked up there, may have got a few more metres, could have even have led to a try, so I'm sure that will be fed back to her. But you know, the Welsh girls, they're not doing too much wrong. It's more just fine-tuning it, run your line straight. Know when it's on to hit it up, know when it's on to go wide. Italian line-out works to Giordano. Rigoni, Franco, happy to stay in midfield and use her impressive power within those sort of confines. Locatelli, the try scorer, makes a little more headway up towards halfway. That's okay, there's a body there. Fully fit now after that ankle injury against Iron Ireland. Medea can't get her team up towards the halfway mark. And that lady can once again. Franco making the bust up to the 10 metre line. Pitoni, the forwards, happy to have the ball in hand and getting that continuity as a consequence. Offside. Two hookers, very similar, actually, Karis Phillips and Thank Melissa you. Butoni. Thank you. Always tend to be leading from the front in those pick-and-drive areas. Yeah, the work rate from yeah. the Italian forwards then Number is three, absolutely right. fantastic. Outside. What they're missing, though, is just someone on the shoulder. You had one or two busts through then. If the Italians well, could get someone on their shoulder, they'd really get in behind the uh, Thanks, Welsh son. defensive line and could cause some trouble. Well, I mentioned that Giada Franco 
And you can see once again the danger with her, with ball in hand, the power that she provides for the Italian attack. And then you've got the class operators, the likes of Furlan, looking to make the right decisions at the right time. Now, is this the right time for the Azuri to strike before half time? Come. Going to be a scrum put in to the Azuri. 15? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Both teams are going to be very aware of the significance of these last few minutes, especially in this positioning. Italians are going to want to get another score on the board. Wales are definitely going to want to keep them out. This is going to be one battle. Crouch! Okay. We take time. Okay, Captain? Yeah? Two big and bulky front rows desperately trying okay. to get the merest hint of advantage okay. over their opposite okay. numbers. Experienced campaigners, certainly in the Welsh shirts. You look at Carol Thomas winning her 48th cap, Phillips her 40th, Amy Evans with her 23rd. And opposite them, the likes of Batoni, Guy, Gia Giacomoli, that's the, the youngest of the six, just moving into double figures. The 23 year old loose head now. Here comes her back line. Fernand, as Mutso waiting, goes back inside, and the pass finished off by Magatti. We yet again. He, Italy attack showing they have the confidence and the belief to make their attacks count when they get into the opposition 22. Then it was Ferland pulling the Welsh defenders out of place to open the door for Maria Magatti and the rugby Monza finisher does just that. What a big score that is. Yeah, that was quality phase play. Great platform, release the backs, discipline, movement, and then just that little inside pass that is the threat of runners on your shoulder if you can bust through and then offload it it's incredibly difficult to defend phil on here is a fantastic player very threatening on the outside having that composure to pop that little inside pass keeping her hands free it's great play it's a well deserved well worked try by the italians and incredibly significant at this point of the game big psychological tick in the box for the visitors Michaela Solari is just, I think, coming back on. She will have enjoyed watching that from the sidelines. For now, kicking duties right. are going to be taken over by uh, Beatrice Rigoni. Made her debut four years ago against Wales. Two big points on offer here. Not quite looking around and just running out of gas before it approached the post, but the whistle goes at half time. Italy with their noses back in front, a captivating first 40. But those two tries for the visitors means that they lead 12 8 at the break. <laughs>
Locatelli's try getting Italy off on to the front foot immediately. Magatti's try right at the end of the half, confirming their lead, but it's been a real nip and tuck game. Both teams having opportunities. It's a matter of making the most of those opportunities. Alicia Butchers did manage to get Wales on the scoreboard just after the half-hour mark. I'm Simon Ward. Alongside me, Philippa Tatia. Philippa, from a Welsh perspective, do you expect them to change tactics at all, or is it just a matter of execution? Yeah, I don't think it would be so much around tactics. I think it would have been more around composure and especially directness, direct lines of running out in the back line, and they will reap the benefits from it. And from an Italian perspective, I won't say surprised because, as I've said, we've seen these flares of wonderful attacking prowess from them, but presumably just more of the same, and they have made the most of those opportunities. They have, definitely. I think for the Italians, it's more just keeping the ball. Don't let those turnovers happen, and if anything, get on the shoulders of your forwards runners because uh, the Italians will capitalise on that. Well, Sillery back on the park, having had some stitches. At the end of the first half, there she is going into the contact with that Harlequin scrum cap on, formerly of the Quinns ladies, of course, along with Manuela Furlan, part of the double winning squad from last season. And Franco, now she has made a big impression in every sense of the word, though handling just letting her down there. Bevan feeding out to try scorer Butchers. Two back rows scoring for their team so far in this game, and that highlights the fluidity and the wide games that we've seen. We've seen Jazz Joyce in the first half. We're seeing again at the beginning of the second, the seven star showing that thrust, that electric pace that she possesses. Yeah, a well-timed pass there by Hannah Jones at full back to release Jasmine Joyce down the wing. Just a little draw and give just enough space for Jasmine to use her stride and get round the outside. Unfortunately, just that work on the floor there, she loses control of the ball. It's a knock on and a turnover. Such an elusive runner. So dangerous, so exciting. Just got to be given the right position, the right game management to show what she can do. And Jess Kavanagh Williams on this near side wing as well. They are both strike runners of, of the, the highest order. Absolutely, and uh, really Jess Kavanagh's had quite a, a quiet game, not by her own admission, just because she hasn't had the ball in space. And she is a real threat for the uh, Welsh back line. So they're going to be looking to try and bring her into play a lot more. There's Kavanagh Williams. Now, you want commitment. Jess Kavanagh Williams makes a six hour, 300 mile round trip to train yep. three times a week. Yeah, absolutely. That is commitment. I think she lives in the middle of the Snowdonia National Park or somewhere, doesn't she? Yeah, she's right up north. Yeah, there's, uh, there's lots of stories amongst these girls, and I'm sure it's the same with the Italians as well. The commitment uh, to their teams is absolutely fantastic. Kavanagh Williams will be looking forward to the Colwyn Bay match. That's uh, almost local for her. Well, not quite, but you know what I mean. Wales now trying to get some flow into their attack. Bevan. Butchers stays in at first receiver. Now they've got numbers loading onto this left channel. Hannah Jones, the Gloucester Heartbreak. Almost utility back. Such an elusive runner when she's given opportunity. But the turnover is going to deny Wales another chance. And it's Jones who has to scuttle back. Berlan, her opposite number, up on her shoulder, but Jones does very well there. Yeah, there were some questions about Jones at fullback. She's uh, more commonly found in the centre, but she has settled into that 15 role. Well, there's been a different fullback in every match so far in the Sorry. Six Nations Sorry. for Wales. Evans starting in the 15 shirt against Scotland. Alan Snowsill, of course, returning to the 15s game as fullback. And then uh, Lisa Newman, who started in the 15 in the Irish game. Yeah, the, the normal lady that we would find back there would be Dudley Powell. Unfortunately, he's had an injury that's kept her out of this campaign. 
but she's uh, she's on her way back and uh, hopefully we'll see us back soon at that 15 jersey and Dusky Howell's foot problem seems to have been sorted so I'm told so an, an important player to return an important kicker as well because she's she's a prime kicker isn't she yeah she's got the left boot on her and a big left boot so it's uh, it's fantastic for the Wales squad to have the, the pinpoint accuracy of uh, Eleanor Snowsill at fly half and then having Dusky Howell at the back there to really uh, get some distance on the kicks as you can see the lid is on the roof is okay. in and the uh, ambience being heightened as a consequence as the fans continue to feed into this huge wonderful stadium they are being presented with some right royal rugby entertainment not an hors d'oeuvre there's two main meals sunday service really working well so far baratine Find Shannon Harris as a human backpack, but the ball is still there for the back line with Rigoni. Locatelli releasing the ball again. Good work from Carol Thomas, but still there for Italy. Franco rebuffed. Italy setting out their stall inside Welsh territory. Sonari trying to turn Jazz Joyce. Well weighted kick as it turned out. Yeah, very good kick there by Solari. Uh, I think they, they could uh, sense that things were getting a little bit frantic. That was quite a long period of phase play, so she's just decided to uh, put the ball to boot, get it down there, reset and go again. Please. Please. Checking Thank the you. mark for Karis Phillips. Respect Scored to a try against Italy and against Scotland in last Six Nations. Yeah, the match, of course, in round one against Scotland. Not being contested by Italy. Oh, was the ball still at the front? Need to hear what the referee's call is on that one. Okay, so bodies, the ball was still with her. The ball was still with her. Ball was at the front, says Carol Thomas. Yeah, so Let's this is where we this. get very technical now. Clever play by, uh, by the Italians. Right, it's, is it the position of Thomas that the referee is questioning? I don't know, that's a tight call, but it's gone to Italy and it means it's a scrum put in for the visitors. Lucia Guy, the Italian tight head on this near side up against Carol Thomas. Two experienced operators, Guy plays her rugby in France for Stade Rene along with four of these other girls in blue. A professional pastry maker, who would have thought a tight head would be a professional pastry maker? Well, you know that a lot of these ladies are, uh, are amateur athletes, so they do have careers on the side sure. and careers of all colours. If I say icing on the cake, you can kick me. Falan's going to kick it now, but overweighting that. That was a big opportunity for Italy. And Manuela Falan knows it was a missed opportunity. Yeah, Falan will be uh, very frustrated with that. She is a, a top quality, experienced fullback who. Uh, did not want to kick the ball in that way. You can see what she's trying to do. She's trying to weight it just behind the Welsh defence to allow the Italian winger to run onto it, but unfortunately overcooked it and they have lost possession. Snowsill says to the Italian fullback, come on then, let's see what you can do again. Falan. Oh, that's great work. I think that was from Lillicrat. Second row, pickpocketing the Italian fullback there fairly blatantly. Again, Snowsill happy to kick the ball into the Italian half. And see what they've got. Maria Magatti already got one try at the end of the first half. Karen Lake penalised. No, 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 not enough cricket. One of the two mums in the Welsh side, so a special day for them. 
Yeah, absolutely. Karen Ann Jade Knight. We saw uh, Jade Knight in the uh, anthem so with her little boy there, which is very, very sweet. Yeah, I'm not sure Emrys really ap appreciated the enormity of the occasion. Quite happy to uh, stay in the warm confines yep. of his mum's batch. Well, there's a man who's happy. Andrea Di Gian Domenico really appreciating the school board at the moment, but there's a long half an hour to go yet. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the Italians have had a tough campaign. They've played some of the biggest teams in this Six Nations, so they're definitely targeting Wales, and they are definitely going to be targeting Scotland next week as well. Oh, sliding through is Medea. Medea gets it back to Locatelli. She scored one in the first half. She stopped just short in the second. Italy flooding forward with this big opportunity. And it's there, and it's Regani with the finish. That is a classic rugby try. It's a classic Italian rugby try. And what a big fillip it is to Beatrice Rigoni and her teammates. Yeah, we said it in the first half. If the Italians can capitalise on those breaks from the forwards, getting people on shoulders, then they will reap the benefits from it. It's a great little show. Dummy switch, breaks through the Welsh defence. She's got players flooding through left and right. Kicks out the flanker there. He's a strong runner. And a quick ball away. They managed to retain the possession. Got plenty of players and options there, left and right. Right decision there for Baratine. She chooses left, quick slick hands, and get a try there in the corner. Well, again, the Italians showing the execution and the belief. And uh, if there's a note of surprise in my voice, it's only as what's come before this match in terms of the thumping that they took against the French, England beating them, particularly in the second half. And they've shown a a confidence in their attacking play that belies their position. Yeah, absolutely. I think the Italians have grown in confidence. What they've had in this game that they've never really had in this Six Nations is possession. And uh, if you give any any team a time to settle in, a time to get rid of those unforced errors, then they will grow in confidence. And the Italians are a classic example of that. The momentum is definitely in their court. Well, Wales have to look inside themselves without looking outside at the school board right now because there's still a half an hour left on the clock, plenty of time, but they've got to get their attacking game into good nick and nick that is going to allow them to finally get themselves over that white line. They've had the possession, but the Italians have shown them how to finish. Oh, mistake there from Harris and Kavanaugh Williams. The hack through from Magatti. Locatelli's up there. Snowsill does very well. My goodness me, she needed to be quick, but the penalty is given away. Magatti takes and goes. Thomas trying to backpedal at a rate of knots. Well, the wind is very much in the Italian sails right now. Another score here. Would be a big, big yeah, encouragement She's not on feet, for so the visitors. She has to before getting no, and use the ball. Yes, she is. Yes, yes, she is. Yes. Yeah, we said at the beginning, you know, the Italians do love open play. They love those scraps, and there were two scraps that capitalised. And it's finished now with a, a line out to uh, to Italy on the five metre. It's a great position for the Italians. Came from, unfortunately, a bit of mismatch of communication there between uh, Seanad Harris and, uh, and our winger. But it um, was kicked forward, kicked through by the Italians. Again, scrappy open play, they will capitalise on it. Big moment in this game as Locatelli flies high at the top of the lineup, can't hold on to the ball, but there's a reason for that, says Marine Lamat. And I think we're going to see a card coming here. Card is going to Melissa Clay. Well, Welsh not happy with some of these calls, but they're going to now have to work a player down for the next ten. Yeah, this is really where the mental toughness comes into play for this uh, this Welsh team. You've got to deal with what's happened. You've got to shake it off, and you now have to defend your try line. Here's where the call was made. Locatelli was up there. 
Well, she was sacked there. Not sure whether it was actually Clay or Lillicrat, but one of the second rows has gone. Locatelli again providing the focus. This time the ball does go loose. I think it's Sean and Harris who's picked up that scrap. And it's Amy Evans who tries to drive them away from danger. Yes, well done, Sean at Harry's. If ever there was a turnover needed, it was right then. And here is a scenario where, where Wales are going to feel a bit frenzied, a bit put upon. They're on the back foot. Everything seems to be going Italy's way. Mentally, they've got to show the fortitude that they that they can actually reset themselves, reboot themselves, if you like, and go again. Yeah, absolutely. And from this area of the pitch, you know that's a difficult thing to ask, but this is where you have your, dif your, your difference in the, in the international teams at the elite level. Who can remain composed? Kavanaugh Williams coming in Cross. as the auxiliary flanker now Bind. to make sure that they can uh, take this possession from the put-in. Harris picks and gives back to Kira Bevan. Evans. Good pragmatic work from the forwards now. Harris been there, seen it, done it, got most of the T-shirts. And Snowsill completes okay, the exit. Yeah, that was a great kick there by Elena Snowsill, really under pressure. Still manages to get a good bit of distance. Let's get out of the half, away from there. So there's Roland Phillips along Sorry. with Paul Young. Got to make yep. some big calls now for the next seven and a half Blue. minutes Five. and beyond, of course. And We're going to see a change in the Italian pack. That's Ilaria Arighetti on to replace Giordana Duca. Arighetti not normally a second row, so it'll be interesting to see where she sets up in the set piece. Of course, flexibility is vital within any women's squad. And oh, Beth Lewis, sorry, Beth Lewis coming off to be replaced by Nia Ellen Davis. Nia Ellen Davis, fantastic uh, back row there, well experienced as well. So Beth Lewis done uh, done her shift. She is uh, a player to watch for the future, being developed every game. Rigoni immediately brings Arrighetti into the action. Again, the width on the ball, Fallant. Feeding Stefan, haven't seen much of the Stade Rene flyer. Experienced operator out on that left wing, albeit she's wearing the 14 shirt. Oh, Ratza losing the ball in the contact, and Wales trying to make the most of this now. The halfbacks working seamlessly to get themselves away from danger. Yeah, that was a great turnover by Carol Thomas there. Just holding up the Italians for that split second allowed her to, to get the rip in and, and steal that ball. You see the loose head standing strong. Doing the damage. Thomas, who works for the Bath Community Foundation as a coach, as an inclusion coach, says that her inspiration is David Flatman. When will they learn? It's the front row union for you. Good jackaling there from Butchers. Well, the call is off the feet. I think it I think it went against Thomas actually, not against Butchers. Yeah, it's about that breakdown there. If you are gonna go for the ball, you must remain on your feet, supporting your own body weight and referee felt that their Carol Thomas wasn't uh, supporting her own weight. So that's off the feet, and that's a penalty. Well, Rigoni is going to send her team back into the Welsh 22, coming towards the hour mark, and the visitors very much in control on the scoreboard. Yeah, absolutely. Gosh, the, the momentum uh, pendulum is swinging left and right, but at the moment it is with the Italians. HIA for Eleanor Snowsill, I think. Being indicated by the physio there. Fly half. Wait, wait. No, no, no. HIA 
being checked out, rightly so. This could be a debut for... Let's look in the sales, see if Alex Donovan was coming on. She's not. Here she is. Debut for Alex Donovan. Special moment, the eighth new cap that Wales have used so far this Six Nations. And a big, big moment for the 26-year-old. A crossover sportsman from netball and hockey. And as you mentioned earlier, Philippa, already shown in Wales colours against the armed forces that she is a real hot prospect. Yeah, she's got great potential. Most comfortable in the, in the centres, which is where we're going to see her now. And then uh, I guess one of the advantages of having uh, two fly halves in Eleanor Snowsill and Robin Wilkins is, is Robin's just going to shuffle up now into the fly half position. So hopefully it won't cause too much disruption for the Welsh back line. It may not be for too long either. Hopefully if the uh, HIA has passed correctly and, su and successfully. The ricochet just about working for Wales. Wilkins okay. is finding she's not going to throw the 50-50 call. The call will go for Wales in any case. Yeah, I think Wales had the intention then of actually spreading the ball wide and uh, trying to get out of their 22 with their running rather than kicking. We saw in, in the match in Dublin beginning of the third quarter I think and the beginning of the fourth quarter as well that Wales were really able to link things together and execute it is a confidence thing it's a mental thing isn't it to just hold that belief to make sure that they still play with that positivity absolutely yeah I mean you've got some experienced heads in there that are going to be able to keep that momentum but equally as we know we've got a lot of new, new players coming into it as well so just making sure that everyone is on the same page Jade Knight makes her entrance to the game replacing Bevan as that pivot good to see her back on the park made her debut against Scotland with a start now looking to make a difference over the next 21 minutes or so. Oh, Italy destroying that well scrum there and Butcher's doing very well to rescue things, I think. From a Welsh perspective, yeah, they get the call. Italy 8 really coming through with some power. Yeah, the Italian pack, they have really grown and bonded together. I mean, to keep uh, England quiet, to keep England's pack quiet in their first game was, uh, was no small feat. So very, very powerful and strong swim there. Not too much distance on the kick from Wilkins, but take a look at this. Power coming through there. I'm not sure what the referee actually saw was the problem there from an Italian perspective. But it's a Welsh line-out that works this time as Davis provides the ball for a forwards. Phillips coming through, urging her pack to take them up into opposition territory to reset their stall. Butchers does just that. Can't get the offload away. Rigoni doing very well over the ball. Davis again. There's Joyce having to go from standing, from stationary perspective. Wilkins throws it out wide. There's the new cap, Donovan. Knight. Finding no way past Mar Maria Magatti. <laughs> Wales beginning to get that continuity now into their game, getting a bit of flow. Wilkins kicks the ball away, looking for territory and position, and gets it. Well, the Italians don't think it's bounced out correctly. That pleading for the TMO, but I don't think they're going to get it. 
we like to think that that was obviously all pre-planned and that's exactly where she wanted the ball to bounce but uh, that was a great pick good bit of territory there managed to maintain that composure we were talking about earlier build the phases and then robin wilkins just slotted them downfield yeah from a welsh eyes that is a superb kick of course wilkins from a welsh rugby family a dad willem played on the wing against tonga back in the 90s 1994 i think it was great to see this rugby heritage coming through now in the women's game rigoni charged down the rebound working just about giacomoli bringing the ball in Penalty is there. And Sean and Harris with that look of disbelief. Yeah, that was great pressure by the centre there, Karen Lake, forcing that kick to be knocked back. Fortunately, the uh, forwards couldn't quite capitalise on turning that ball check. over then. Okay. Okay. Now, the officials just checking Chamber back check. on an earlier tackle. Kevin Beggs, the television match official, conferring with Marie okay. Lamatt. Let's just take a look here. It's Furlan coming through. Butchers with the tackle. And that's above the horizontal. She could have problems there. Right, yeah. So Alicia Butchers has made great contact there in on Furlan 15. As she's driven her backwards. OK, yeah, Marie, do you over. want to see it again? I'll replay the first angle again The first for angle, you. please. Well, Marie Lamatt wanting a second view of this. Watch the Wales six there. There's the lift. I think that okay. could be okay, Marie, at least the yellow. Best angles. Yes, OK. Let's have a uh, listen. I think uh, it's, for me, I don't think it's really dangerous. OK, happy with that. Yes, I think play on. Oh, OK, Marie, I'm going to show you that first angle again. Yeah. And I just want you to look at the lifting action lifting of action. red six on yeah. the legs of yeah. the blue player. Okay? OK, we'll just show you that it's first lifting. angle again. Yeah. Well, the referee okay. and television match official just checking this again. And I think you can see yeah, where okay, Kevin Beggs is coming from. Yes, yeah. OK, uh, yeah. there's a clear lift, clear lift of the legs by the red player. Yeah. Her legs go past the horizontal. Yes, and she falls on the side. I and she falls to that? her side. Yeah, so I think at penalty kick only. She, she's not full on the back, yeah. Oh, OK, yeah, her legs have gone past the horizontal and she's landed on her side. Ah, OK, yeah, I think. Can you repeat? Do you think her her legs have yeah. gone past the horizontal and she's landed on her side. Yes, OK, so it's a yellow card. I would agree with the yellow card. Agree yes. with that? Yes. Finally, Finally they get through to a decision. Okay. And Alicia Butchers is going to sit out the next 10. Wales yeah. temporarily down to 13. Yeah, so as a tackler, you do have to maintain yeah. safety in the game. As much as we're looking for okay. these strong and powerful yeah. hits, uh, if you do lift, lift up a player, you have to put them back down safely. And unfortunately, Furlan was put down on her shoulders, which is above her yeah. hips, and she was driven into the ground, which is uh, an unsafe tackle. So consequently, Alicia Butchers yeah. has And gone. I think the key from Kevin Begg's perspective was just the lifting. Yes, there's momentum going into the tackle, but you have to be technically so spot on. Uh, as soon as you go above that horizontal, there's an issue. Well, Wales only going to be down to 13 for a matter of seconds as Melissa Clay returns to the fray. Advantage Italy, 17 minutes left. Great steal in the middle of that line out. Ruzza, though. Jackling over the She's ball and getting the call. And Wales really have found themselves on the wrong side of this referee really on more one. than one occasion. No. Yeah, that was great reactions by the Italian forwards, getting straight in on that ruck, turning that ball over. Wales definitely are on the back foot. That little shake of the head from Karis Phillips just Red, confirming the... Seeming yes, confusion in Welsh minds as to what is allowed and not allowed. Italy won't mind. 
they're very much in the ascendancy right now as Melissa Batoni played a tight head in the Rugby World Cup but at hooker today Medea coming round on the wrap to get Furlan going Furlan stopping short of this near side touchline Well, Elena Snowsill is not going to be returning to the park we're here, so Sorry. Alex Donovan is going to be on for the remainder. Robin Wilkins obviously will set, step no into no, not too, under, under that fly half berth fairly easily. Okay. Yeah, Robin with Wilkins started yeah. the campaign there at, uh, at fly half. She's more than comfortable in that position, so hopefully it won't shake them up too much. Concern for Jada Franco. She actually was carried off. Oh, I beg your pardon. That's Gia, Gia Giacomoli. But Franco at the back of that group was actually taken off in, in seemingly a lot of pain in that game against France. And I was wondering whether she was going to be fit to return for this one, but has made uh, quite an impact, impactful return on this Italian forward effort. Quarter of an hour left. Wales now with a nine-point differential to make up and a player down for the next eight minutes or so. Wilkins gets the call from Kavanaugh Williams. Good handling from the Welsh backline to release Jazz Joyce again. Joyce hurtling towards the 22. Quick ball needed. Jade Knight keeping things happening. Karis Phillips maintains the momentum. Wales now inside the Italian 22. Donovan just losing the ball for a moment, but it's still there for Wales. They have to reboot their attack from further out now. Carol Thomas doing such work okay. in the open for a loose head prop. Sean yeah, yeah. Harris no, 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 finding no, 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 no way through. Okay. See the way the Welsh front row play together in open phase play. Yeah, they're an incredibly mobile pack. You will see them from wing to wing. Donovan getting the ball through the tackle to Hannah Jones. As Wales approach the 22 again, just as I say that, the handling of Davis lets her down and Advantage over. the boot of Baratine sends Wales scuttling back into their own half. Donovan gets the bounce of the ball. Play on, she said. Verlaine watching from a stationary position as Alex Donovan scoots back towards that 22. No. No. You can feel the momentum just starting to change a little bit here. Alex Donovan with a great counter-attack then. Starting to see a little bit of her flair. Hopefully she's going to grow in confidence now over the next couple of minutes because uh, we okay, need Captain. everybody firing if Wales are going to turn this around. Is that okay? Okay. We're just concerned for Karis Phillips. There. Yeah. He's the Welsh captain. Yeah. Time off. Checking now. Is there? I was going to tackle. And no, for me not. No. For me not. For me not. She was behind. Yeah. Checking that the skipper's okay. What is it? It's HIA. There's Jade Knight. Always yeah. going to be yeah. part of a rugby family. The first man Red. to score a try at the Millennium HIA. Stadium, okay. as it was, okay. right. was Mark Taylor. That's her uncle back in 1999. I think it was South okay. Africa. Welsh fans will tell me that. But uh, she was here, she says, watching her uncle. How proud she must be now that she's back in the mix on the park. Changes in the Welsh backline as Lisa Newman comes on in the 
while Jazz Stop. Joyce Correct. is having a head injury because assessment. You moving, okay? So you have to be on the Big moment for Wales now. They need to be coming away with some points. Anissa Butchers watching on as the sin bin ticks over. Clay, the target. Phillips. The crowd urging the drive. Don't forget Wales down a player for the next four minutes. Blue challenging. Down nine points at the moment. They need to find a response here. Harris leading the way. Again, I don't Blue side and Penalty Number nine, against Italy. Italy. I think it was Baratine. Phillips taps, goes, says, follow me. Follow me, they do. And Wales get the subsequent try. I think it's Charlotte Harris who actually has gone down the blind side. Yeah, Wales, they're building on their strengths. When they keep it tight, when they're that close to the try line, it's very difficult to keep those powerful forwards out. We've got Seanette Harries on the ball, and she can see the try line only a metre or two in front of her. She is incredibly difficult to stop. Well composed, and all of this with a player down. So, with good respect for the, uh, the Welsh women there. Okay. Well, Harries, who scored a brace against Italy two years ago at Patalbert, now gets a try, and a very important try on the board here in Cardiff, which means that with ten minutes left on the clock, Wales bring them back within a score. That is a cracking kick from Robin Wilkins. What a conversion! What a big two points! What a finish we've got in prospect now. Yeah, this always was going to be such an exciting game, such a, an occasion for stadium, but also just the competitiveness between these two teams, both absolutely fighting it out. This game is so important for both teams in this Six Nations, and it's proving to be quite an exciting finish. Well, who's going to be able to hold their nerve in these final ten minutes now? Wales will be delighted to have Alicia Butchers back in a couple of minutes to restore their full armoury. Those front rowers in red shirts just have not stopped. Their enthusiasm, their energy has been so impressive. Call goes to the visitors. Over-enthusiasm from uh, Natalia John, I think it was, on that occasion. Was it? Yeah, that's a shame there. There was uh, yeah. real good momentum created there between Mel Clay and uh, Mia Ellen linking up. There is Natalia John, the Ospreys forward. Made her debut Number against four, Scotland in round one. Number four. So Change within the Italian ranks as uh, Valentina Ruzza is replaced by Elisa Pilotti. There she is. So the Italian pack may be losing a couple of its power players, but getting a lot of athleticism from their replacements. Petoni. No hands, red. No hands. Stefan having to step back, in back, stop. as first receiver. No, 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 back. It's a messy breakdown. Move. Back. Sillery working hard to keep those fringe defenders on as Rigoni spots a big space. This is opportunity. Oh! Locatelli thought it was Christmas come early then. Yeah, that's the cruel bounce of the ball. Yeah. Unfortunately, in rugby, you can never quite yes. predict how that ball's going to bounce, but that was a clever play, kick through there. And uh, if it could have been gathered, it could have been a Yellow real danger returning. for Wales. Yellow card returning. 
Great awareness from uh, Rigoni. Wales now back to their full complement with the return of Alicia Butchers. Clay sets it back for Knight. And Wales are going to have to go from deep. Shannon Harris getting turned turtle almost there. Does well to present the ball. Donovan. Oh, the handling letting Wales down and Italy swarming onto that ball now inside the Wales 22. This is a big test for Wales, it's a big test for Italy. If they can produce another attacking opportunity. Giacomo Lee. The experienced heads of the likes of Baratine and Ferlan, so important. I think Ferland's fingertips just edge that one forward, though. But Italy will be satisfied as long as they're playing in this part of the pitch right now as the clock continues to be their friend. Absolutely, Italians are going to keep ramping up that pressure. And, you know, we talk about the likes of Baratine. We've got multiple phase play then. She's calm, she's composed, she gets to the base of the ruck. She's looking left, she's looking right. She really is keeping them at a steady okay. ship. But Italians just need to try and minimalize those little unforced errors so they can really build and get into this game. Incredible. Crutch. Five. Set. Jonathan Harris making the break. The bust away from that 22. As Wales look to fire their attack with Alex Donovan. So delighted to receive her jersey from Sam Warburton, her mate, during the week. And now on the park for Wales. Getting the call of the penalty, they've got to go. Five minutes left. Phillips says, get out of my way. Knight out to Butchers, but the ball goes loose again in the contact, and here come Italy. Whisked on to this near side, the little chap through from Magatti. The first kick didn't quite go to plan, the second has. Harris has to skedaddle back to pick up the pieces. And there's going to be a third Welsh card for Wales. Well, confusion in the Welsh ranks continues with the refereeing calls. Shannon Harris, try scorer one moment, Sinbin the next. Starting it a little bit frantic, which you can understand. Obviously, the last dying uh, minutes of the game. It was incredible work rate by the Welsh to get back and to, okay. to get onto that ball, but okay. unfortunately the referee has decided that infringement occurred. We just watch this back now. Sean and Harry straight on the ball. The Italians over trying to jackal it off her. Well, Lamat was the first one. Uh, sorry, Lamat, the referee. Uh, Magatti was the first one to the breakdown. And Harry's pleading that she wasn't allowed to get up. Two, three, red. Who is 23? Oh. 23. Is that the last blow for Wales? They'll have had the best part of half an hour a player down in this game now. They've got Jazz Joyce back on the park. There she is. Maybe, just maybe, she has got the pace to sprint the 85 metres given the opportunity. Yeah, you talk about teams at this level, you know, they have to be flexible, they have to be feasible, and in testament to the Welsh girls there, they've had players on and off for, for injuries, for assessments, they've had, obviously, the sin binnings, and they have still kept fighting and kept coming back. Whether they can hold out now in such a pivotal position, just have to wait and see. The Italian pack rolling up their metaphorical shirt sleeves to drive towards that line. Giordano with the ball and her feet. 
Again, the penalty call goes to the visitors. Well, time for your Six Nations player of the match. Your call for the puck. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, there's been players all over the park putting up their, their hands, but for me, it's the Italian number six, Yada Franco. And you talk about sort of game-changing moments in the first half, her breaks, her moments of flair, that's what got the Italians' tails up. And from that, they kept going, they kept going, and it's resulted now into, into this lead. So a fantastic uh, player, real leader today. Well deserved for the 21-year-old, the way forward for Italy in every sense of the word as Baratine looks to the short side. Great defence from Wales. My goodness me, that was important work from the likes of Mir Allen Davis. Yeah, fantastic work right there. Not only did you have uh, Robin Wilkins, who was there in position to defend that, you also then had your two forwards coming round. Alicia Butcher's near Ellens, straight off the scrum and fighting to push the Italian player out. Well, you would have had all money or all Euros, perhaps, on an Italian school there. Wales really working hard to make sure she was bundled out in the corner. Now they've got to work hard to make sure they can get out of the 22. They've got 90 seconds left. No, you cannot. You have to stay because it's wrong. Again, the call that goes against Wales. Again, Italy are going to try and make the most of it. The drive by Araghetti. There's Giada Franco looking to capitalise on this opportunity, hunting for that fourth tie. A bonus point would follow, of course. And the victory would be assured if they can score now. They've got huge numbers out to the left. It's Celery. They came into this match with not a point in the table. Now they've got a try bonus point and surely a victory as well. What a finish from Italy, what a score, what a special day for Michaela Sillery, the number 13, back on the park with stitches in her head, but she won't be feeling any pain right now. Oh, that was great composure by the Italians in, what was it, frantic last minutes of the game. They hit it up, they hit it up, then they sucked in, the Welsh defence made it very narrow, and they were able to expose that then out wide. Well-deserved try for the Italians. Well, the girl they call Nemo. Yes, 20 seconds now. Finishing off in some style. Yep. Finishing this game off for the Azurian style. And look at the emotion on her face. Okay, the delight. They've been through the, some big hardships. They've lost their last eight Six Nations games, don't forget. The final kick of this game. And it goes to Italy, as does the game. That's it. It's all over. Italy have come to Cardiff and scored four ties to get their first win in nine Six Nations matches. Their last win was here in Port Talbot two years ago. They've done the same in Cardiff. On the day for the mothers in the land of my fathers, it's Italy who celebrate a very special day with a huge and emotional win. Wales 15, Italy 22. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Tom. Gareth, a frustrating day for you. What did you make of that last and third yellow card on Sean Harris? Um, 
it's, it's frustrating. You know, obviously we go back and look at things. Uh, but discipline was probably an issue for us all day. Um, you know, we can point fingers, but really we were looking at ourselves. You know, we conceded far too many penalties. We got in good areas of the field and then gave the ball up. And we, I think we showed at times the girls showed what they're capable of doing. We just couldn't do it often enough today. Did Italy rise to the occasion, or did the nerves get the better of the Welsh girls? Uh, look, Italy are a good side. You know, all, all the sides are very competitive in the Six Nations and the women's game. Um, and they were the better side on the day, you know, they, they managed the occasion better, maybe. You've got France next, a quick turnaround. What will you work on this week? We, we just keep building and working on the game we want to play. Obviously, we need to maintain possession, I think, uh, a lot better. Um, for the defensive effort in the second half was a lot better than it was in the first half. So, um, it was certainly positives to take out of the game. And enough set strength in depth to rotate for the game? Because they've just won against England, so they're on a high. Yeah, it's a huge game for them, obviously, going for the Grand Slam. So, big challenge next week, but 